Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend, same time, same station. So if you have friends or relatives, family members that you think would benefit from listening to our health topics, just tell them where we are. And if you are outside of the listening area and would like to join us, they can anywhere around the world. All they need is their computer. Go to our website, terrytalksnutrition.com, and click on live at the radio show section and just change your times wherever you are to be on the same time we are here in the Central Standard Time in the USA. If that's inconvenient, you can still listen to a lot of radio shows by going to the same website, same radio show section, and listen to shows that are archived there and bring them up as you choose. You can listen to a lot of radio shows that have been archived there for you, for your enjoyment. Take them with you wherever you go. You can listen in a variety of ways. And in fact, there's a lot of other ways you can listen as well. You can listen by going to Apple Podcasts. In fact, you can listen to Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Modify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Listen Notes, Player FM, Audible, Deezer, Podcast Addict, many, many ways to listen to the show and to view our podcast. So with that, my friends, we have some very, very wonderful topics for you today. And our feature topic is natural help for a leaky bladder. This is a very common problem. And people just don't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. It's frustrating. Some women have told me they don't even want to talk to their doctor about it. So here is some information that may help you. In fact, this is a new survey. Over a thousand women, ages 50 to 80 years of age, and over half of the women over age 65, and 43% of those over the age of 50 to 64, reported that they suffer from incontinence. 30% said they experience leakage nearly every day. Very embarrassing. Most common triggers that cause the leakage. Women said 79% based on coughing and sneezing. 64% said not having enough time to reach the bathroom. 60% of the women said they were too embarrassed to talk to their doctor about their bladder problems. It's amazing. This is just a natural, I, I don't want to say it's a natural occurrence, although it is, but it's something that happens. And while it might be embarrassing, Look for a solution. Now, there are some lifestyle suggestions that may be able to help you and may reduce bladder leakage. Now, it has been shown scientifically that you should avoid bladder irritants. There are some irritants that stimulate the bladder or irritate the bladder and cause the leakage. Number one is artificial sweeteners. They're not so innocent. People want to give up sugar. So they reach for drinks that have artificial sweeteners. They're worse than sugar. And while I want you to give up sugar, it's not good for you, especially high fructose corn syrup, but artificial sweeteners 
they found that women drinking Diet Coke had 3.5 times more leakage. And these are, these are urgency episodes. They can't wait. It just happens. Versus women drinking water. And nicotine. In a clinical study, twice as many women who smoked had problems with incontinence versus non-smokers. And coughing, which we already mentioned, coughing and sneezing, but many women, and men included, cough from smoking that stresses the bladder. Alcohol, another irritant, as well as caffeine. There are, other, there are other things that we can do, too. Lose weight. Lose weight will help everything about your body. Believe me. It'll help type 2 diabetes. It'll help heart disease. It'll help cancer. Lose weight. Extra weight puts pressure on your bladder. Empty the bladder more frequently. If you have incontinence, Visit the bathroom every two to four hours. Always be ahead of it. Prevention, so to speak. And then there is an herbal solution for bladder problems in men and women. And why do I include men? Because men often have to get up through the night to urinate. There's an urge to get up through the night based on their prostate, but the prostate doesn't need emptying. The bladder does. So they're getting up because of the bladder irritant. And there is an herb that grows in Iceland that has been scientifically studied to improve incontinence both in men and women. Angelica Archangelica from Iceland. That is the name of an herb. And I'm not pronouncing it twice. It is Angelica, Archangelica. Clinically studied to help reduce urinary frequency problems. Shown to increase bladder capacity and reduce the number of urinations for men at night. Now, of your urgency women, is during the day. Take Angelica Archangelica in the morning. Men usually have an urgency at night. So take Angelica Archangelica before going to bed at night. So what does this mean for you? Well, the subjects of the studies had to make fewer bathroom trips at night. And the benefit is, fewer bathroom trips means better sleep and better rest. Some men get up three, four, five times a night. And it's usually just an urge. There really isn't enough urine to eliminate. It's just a constant urge throughout the night. And this can be eliminated by taking the Angelica Archangelica before bedtime. This would be very helpful for both men and women to benefit all of their incontinence. Now, Angelica Archangelica is useful for other things as well. Overactive bladder and stress incontinence. I've had women tell me that when they do something strenuous, I had one lady tell me that as a nurse, every time she had to help someone sit up in bed or turn someone over in bed, she had to, she had the urge to, to, go to the bathroom, 
or she had leakage because of the of the pressure sitting up, sitting, helping someone sit up correctly. And then BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. The prostate enlarges and pushes on the bladder. Nighttime trips to the bathroom. Bed wetting for children and adults. Angelica Archangelica is very, very safe. There are no side effects. It can be taken very easily for children. And for also for interstitial cystitis. They found in a survey in Iceland, Angelica is more popular for bladder issues in men than Saul Palmettleberry. So how do you use Angelica, Archangelica? And who should use it? Well, of course, anyone with leakage. Anyone with an urge to go to the bathroom or have to stop every time you see a bathroom. Or for men, who have to get up several times through the night. So if you have bladder problems during the day, take 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams daily in the morning. If you have bladder issues, bladder problems at night, take before going to bed, 100 to 200 milligrams before bedtime. Very safe, no significant adverse events, and no side effects. Very safe for everyone, children included. Now, how can you get stronger and live longer? Muscle strength. Now, you're not going to be a bodybuilder. You're not going to go to the gym necessarily. You don't have to. But there are ways to strengthen your muscles, which in the long term will extend your life and make your life a better quality of life. There are many elderly people who have lost so much muscle strength And we all do. It's inevitable. We will all lose muscle strength in time. Every decade, we lose muscle strength. And then we get into the 60s, 70s, and 80s. We have lost so much muscle strength, we can't do our daily activities. We can't garden. We can't walk a good distance. We can't get out of a chair without someone assisting us to get out of the chair because we don't have the muscle strength. So how can we keep our muscle strength and extend our life? So researchers collected data from previously published studies on exercise and mortality. This was a meta-analysis, including over 200,000 people. Now, a meta-analysis is a collection of studies on a given topic. And after they look at all the studies on that given topic, they come to a conclusion and they write one study based on all the information they got from several studies or 100 studies or 200 studies. Now, they found that 30 to 60 minutes A week of strength training reduces the risk of death from any cause as well as the risk of serious diseases such as cancer, heart disease, and diabetes by up to 20%. That's 30 to 60 minutes. And that's a week, not a day. So you need just about 10 minutes eight to 10 minutes a day of strength training will reduce the risk of death from any cause whatsoever and reduce your risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. 
And then adding some aerobic exercise. Walking. Bicycle. Stationary bicycle. Whatever. That will increase your aerobic capacity. And by doing this, it doubles the benefits. A 40% reduction in mortality versus a sedentary lifestyle. Or otherwise, lazy, lazy, lazy. Get off the couch. You are suffocating. You're going to be dying earlier. You're losing your strength. 12 minutes. 12 minutes of strength training. Now, strength training means whatever you can accomplish with weight based on your strength at the time you begin. Could be five pounds. For some, maybe 25 pounds. But it isn't like doing squats, deadlifts, bench presses. There are some very nice things you can do with band training, And just some strength training, just squats without any weight. Just with your physical body, squat 25 times. And do this five days a week equals 60 minutes. Only 12 minutes a day. And actually, research has found no additional benefits for more than 60 minutes of strength training a week. Now, friends, everybody can find 12 minutes a day. And also, they have done a tremendous amount of research that we need more protein in our diet to strengthen our muscles. We can't build muscle without protein. Meat, fish, eggs, cheese, all the good protein foods. Reduce the carbohydrates, reduce the sugar, increase fats, good fats, and protein. We need the amino acids, which we can only get from protein to build our muscle strength. So between the two, you can have a whole new life. You'll be able to go on tours. You'll be able to walk further. You'll be able to get out of a chair with somebody without having someone come over and help you out. Be independent. And you will stay more independent if you do these things. You can stay in your home longer, not ending up in a nursing home. You'll be able to take care of yourself just by doing some basic strength training, only 12 minutes a day. And if you use kettlebells, all you need is six minutes a day. But it'll take you about 20 minutes to do it. But actually, the training is only about six minutes. And you can see my video on my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, of how to do the kettlebell swing. If you just do the kettlebell swing every day or five days a week, you'll be able to have that strength you need. Also focus on eating more protein and less sugar and carbohydrates, less bread, less pasta, less junk, and focus on meat, fish, eggs, cheese, all the good stuff quality of proteins of all kinds. You'll have more strength. You'll be more independent. You won't have have to have somebody take care of you. And that's what we really want in the end. Now, talking about artificial sweeteners causing irritation of the bladder. Well, here's more on aspartame. 
aspartame. Is it really a guilt-free sugar? Can you really alternate, alternate from sugar to this sugar-free artificial sweetener? Actually, it is a low-calorie artificial sweetener and 200 times sweeter than sugar. But research has suggested health concerns for over the last 40 years based on laboratory data and clinical trials that include aspartame increases cancer rates, increases anxiety, increases learning problems, increases insomnia, and increases headaches and migraines. The World Health Organization has been analyzing the data on aspartame, and it is predicted they will declare it as a potential carcinogen, otherwise a cancer-causing chemical. All these chemicals are not safe. It is reported they analyzed the results of over 1,300 studies on aspartame, otherwise known as NutraSweet or Equal, and found in hundreds of processed foods, including Diet Coke, sugar-free gelatin, desserts, powdered drink mixes, and candy. Just avoid NutraSweet and Equal. It will give you much more benefits health-wise. Now, why does diabetes type 2 mean that there's a higher risk of fatty liver disease? Right now, fatty liver disease commonly called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is a very common problem in about 30 to 40 million Americans, including children. And there is no sign from having a fatty liver, which ultimately is a disease that can cause cancer, cirrhosis of the liver, and many other complications. At one time, fatty liver disease was called alcoholic fatty liver disease because the alcohol caused the healthy liver cells to be replaced with fat. In a large portion of the liver that normally should have healthy liver cells, they were replaced with fat. So it is common, or not, yes, it is common, but not normal in everybody. That our liver, which is normally four to five pounds, can be as much as 20 pounds based on the fat that has infiltrated the liver. And why is diabetes One of the main causes, remember we call it non-alcoholic because this is type 2 diabetes is the disease of the century. No, it's not COVID. It's type 2 diabetes. We have a fatty liver We have heart disease, cancer, all based on type 2 diabetes. In fact, a new report predicts that by 2050, the number of people living with type 2 diabetes could increase by 60%. The researchers analyzed 16 factors associated with type 2 diabetes and found that most important risk factor contributing to the disease and increase of diabetes is obesity. 
Remember I told you to lose weight? Because losing weight helps every known condition in the body, every disease in the body, every healthy condition in the body is based on your weight. Being overweight or obese contributes to many, many diseases. But there are other contributing factors as well. Changes in the food supply, more high calorie, low nutrient foods, Carbohydrates and sugar do not contain all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that we require to be healthy. Lack of sleep, increased stress, a very lazy lifestyle, not a style, not a lifestyle that where you are more active, where you use the stairs instead of the escalator, where you walk instead of taking your car. Many people go to the gym to work out and they ride around the parking lot looking for the closest parking spot to the door. Aging population. All this are contributing factors that will cause type 2 diabetes and all the other diseases associated with it. In fact, we're going to be pausing here in just a few seconds as we have reached the portion, the end of the portion of the first part of our program, we'll come back in just a few seconds after we allow the radio station to identify itself and to also introduce some commercials that are required to be played during the hour. So it's up to us to make changes. But I'll come back and I'll give you more and other and another consequence of diabetes, and that is fatty liver. Drug companies now are rivaling each other to come up with a cure for fatty liver disease, and I, I have the cure for you. I didn't invent the cure. I didn't come up with the cure. It's just not known. And I'll show you that right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. And welcome back, my friends. We're back here with Terry Talks Nutrition, I am Terry Naturally, and we're here to share with you more information on how you can be healthier, better muscle tone, and enjoy your life, have a better quality of life. We're not trying to live to 120. I don't think it's possible. But we all, we all do want to live the longest life we can, of a quality of life that we can. And we can. doesn't make a difference how old we are, what our conditions are. And most of the conditions that we're trying to treat, the doctors are treating with drugs, are nutritional deficiencies, are based on the nutrition that we include in our diet. So we really want to reduce type 2 diabetes. And it's optional. It's not a disease. It's a nutritional, I guess I would say, it's something that we need to correct nutritionally. It's not a disease. If you have a lot of sugar in your bloodstream, well, duh, where did it come from? Well, Americans are eating a lot of sugar. And our insulin produced by the pancreas is not produced in sufficient quantities to take all the sugar that is consumed, normally shuttled into the cells to be burned as energy. But we have so much sugar in our diet, not enough insulin, and our cells become resistant to the insulin. And so all this sugar and carbohydrates, which have to be converted in the body to sugar before it's metabolized, all that sugar is reserved in case of an emergency, and it's reserved in the form of fat. And that's why people are fat. Too much carbohydrates, too much sugar. Now, a doctor can give you a pill, 
and maybe in some cases even insulin. But do you need it? I would say no. Very, very, very few people, maybe less than 1%, would need a drug. It's all a nutritional choice, a nutritional de decision. Give up sugar or drastically reduce it. Because it's harming your body in a variety of ways. Sugar is the number one cause of many diseases. Sugar by itself is not going to kill you. If you eat some sugar, you're not going to die. But at time, the sugar causes so many other metabolic disorders in the body. They are the result of the sugar consumption. American Diabetes Association recently released a new recommendation for all adults with type 2 diabetes, they should be screened for fatty liver disease. Boy, that's why drug companies are looking for a drug. There is no drug available today to treat fatty liver disease. And they see the money. They see the sales. They see all of it skyrocketing. And they'll all be out there all the salespeople from the drug companies will be advising the doctors what pill to use for fatty liver disease. And up to, up to 70%, get this, up to 70% of people with type 2 diabetes also have fatty liver disease. And there's no need for both, either one. There is no drug treatment for fatty liver disease. And it can only be reversed, only can be reversed through nutrition. Now, 90% of our diseases today are based on our lifestyle choices, based on nutrition, but yet they are still trying to come up with drugs because that's where the money is. So lower your blood sugar. And that will take care of your liver and take care of your type 2 diabetes. Well, how do you lower your blood sugar? Well, first of all, don't eat sugar. And lower your level of carbohydrates. There have been research on 10,000 people that putting them on a low-carbohydrate diet prevented and reversed most of their diseases. We are taking drugs needlessly in most cases. Now, I'm not telling you to go off your drugs. I'm not a doctor. I don't even play a doctor. But talk to your doctor. Maybe you can go off your drugs. Or maybe at a point, you'll improve so much the doctor will not want you on the drug. So the first thing to do is lower your blood sugar. Reduce the amount of sugar you are consuming. But for better blood sugar levels, take 100 milligrams of Hintonia lactiflora. That's an herb. One to three times daily. And this herb is also combined with essential vitamins and minerals for blood sugar levels and lowers the blood sugar levels. After 70 years of research in Germany, this herb shows safety and effectively lowers blood sugar levels. No side effects whatsoever. So for a healthy liver, I would recommend about 200 milligrams of andrographis, perhaps 100 milligrams of clinical OPCs. From French grapeseed extract. And 100 milligrams of milk thistle twice daily. This is a great combination. 
that can support a liver function, a normal, healthy liver function. And a graphis reduces fat deposits in the liver. Grapeseed extract, French grapeseed extract, reduces elevated liver enzymes. Milk thistle improves liver function and has been found effective in treating many types of liver disease. So here you have two really wonderful options. And personally, I would recommend them together. Use Antonia Lactiflora, an herb that you can use one to three times daily. And then a good healthy liver formula that supplies andrographis, French grapeseed extract, and milk thistle. No matter what condition you are in now. And it doesn't make a difference how old you are. The body is very forgiving. After decades of abuse, in many cases, with an improved diet, and I would highly recommend the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet or the Mediterranean diet, all three are a huge advantage over the American diet. And then use formulas that will lower your blood sugar, that will improve your liver function, and you'll have so much better health. So we are all interested in vitamins and minerals and many other nutrients that are there to support our body structure and function. What is the most common nutrient deficiency? Well, I'll give you a hint. It affects 25% of girls and young women. Got the answer? The answer is iron. Iron has had a bad rap for many, many years. Based on one Flawed study, iron causes heart disease, and everybody stopped using iron. Our body needs iron. We can't live without iron. And iron is the, in fact, iron deficiency is the most common nutrient deficiency in the world. 70% of the body's iron is found in red blood cells where it is critical in helping transport oxygen throughout the body. We can't live without iron. And in a new study, researchers looked at iron levels in 3,500 young American females ages 12 to 21. 40% of them were deficient in iron. And the symptoms of iron deficiency include brain fog, fatigue, lightheadedness, shortness of breath, and pale complexion. Iron is a nutrient. We can't disregard it. And you'll find almost 80 to 90% of all daily vitamins deficient in iron. They will not include it in the formula because consumers have heard iron is not good. So they don't want to take iron. But that was a bad study. It was only one study. It was bad. We need to take iron, especially young girls and young women, and especially if the young lady is pregnant. So how do you choose an iron supplement? Well, first of all, avoid, avoid all the bad iron, like ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate is very, very poorly absorbed. 
less than 2% is absorbed. Causes constipation and bloating. And 50% of people prescribed supplemental ferrous sulfate stop taking it because of the side effects and the adverse effects. So the best way to take iron is heme iron, H-E-M-E, heme iron from liver extract. And really try to include more liver in your diet. Liver once or twice a week. Oh, I love liver. I had never found liver well, well prepared in the U.S. because it's not commonly consumed. So when I'm in Europe, especially in France, I find a restaurant that serves liver and it's excellent. Liver and onions, love it. I could have that two or three times a week. And the heme iron is a natural form of iron. It's the most bioavailable form of iron. Up to 33% absorption versus 2% for ferrous sulfate or less for most iron salt. And the heme iron is well tolerated. Few of any kind of side effects or adverse effects And the lower dosages required are effective. And it's natural, it's from an animal source. So look for a chelated iron. If you are not using the liver extract, look for a chelated iron. It raises the hemoglobin and ferritin levels. Not as well absorbed as heme iron, but still three to four times more available, bioavailable, than iron salts. You'd be surprised how you'll feel after you've been taking iron for a few weeks. Significantly fewer issues with adverse effects, especially regarding bloating and constipation preferred by patients by all comparison trials. Well, I bet this is something maybe maybe kids would enjoy. Are you easily distracted? I think a lot of kids are easily distracted. But now older adults have more problems staying focused. You know, as we get older, multitasking, performing a physical task and a mental task at the same time, like having a conversation while driving your car, that's a good example, gets more difficult. You can't look, you can't do both things at the same time. You can't do two things at the same time. Because as we get older, boy, it becomes harder to ignore information that is not relative to what we are doing at the time. We become so more easily distracted. Researchers in California tested this idea in a laboratory setting with with younger and older adults. Both groups had to squeeze a hand grip using a specific amount of pressure while looking at a computer screen and answering questions about what they saw on the screen. They were also shown additional distracting information that they would not be asked about. So the results of this study Working memory scores were two to three times lower in older adults. The harder 
they were asked to squeeze the hand grip. The greater the physical activity or effort, the worse their memory score became. They couldn't do two things at one time. The more distracting information they were given in addition to the relevant information, the worse their memory score became. So the conclusion of all this, with age, comes an increasing inability to focus on what is most important and also at the same time to carry out a physical and mental task simultaneously. We are losing our mental faculties and we lose focus easily. Now, can we block out noise? Here's a new study on vitamin D. And why vitamin D is good for your heart. That's something we haven't heard about too much. But our heart needs vitamin D as well. Especially. Everyone needs it every day. But especially over the age of 60. You need vitamin D. That's what all the research says today. A five-year study of 20,000 adults aged 60 and older, the largest study of its kind ever published, took 60,000 units of vitamin D once a month, not daily, once a month, or a placebo for five years. That comes out to be about 5,000 units per day. And the results, the risk of significant heart disease was almost 10% lower in the vitamin D group who also had a 19% reduced risk of of a heart attack. Vitamin D protects the function of the heart. Some of these experts, research experts, estimate that up to 100% of older adults in the U.S., everyone, has lower vitamin D levels, if not outright vitamin D deficiencies. The average American does not take vitamin D. The average American does not spend enough time in the sun to produce vitamin D naturally. Vitamin D is so important for the health of the body. Now, we've talked about weight loss several times during this show. And I made a comment that losing weight will help every health condition imaginable and actually stop it outright if you get your weight down to the right ratio for your body height. And the best way I can frame it is that your waistline in inches should be half of your height in inches. So if you're six feet tall, that's 72 inches. That means you have a waistline of 36. I'm five foot five. My waistline should be about 30, 32. And that's where it is. Get your weight down so your waistline is half of your height in inches. And now they found, because weight loss is so prevalent for a healthy body, it also slows brain aging. Boy, if you lose weight and you keep it off, and don't do it by cutting calories, eating junk food, but you're just eating (laughs) half half the junk food than before, that doesn't make any sense. Change your food, change the food you're eating. So that means jump on board of a ketogenic diet, a paleo diet, or the Mediterranean diet. 
So you can find them on my website, terrytalksnutrition.com. You can find them by Googling them or buy a book. Learn more about how to change your diet, change the food you're eating to lose weight. And if you go on the ketogenic diet, you're going to lose weight like crazy without struggling, without being deprived, without walking away from the table hungry. Go to the website, dietdoctor.com. Dietdoctor.com. So what effect does diet have on your brain? Well, previous research has documented a link between obesity and accelerated brain aging. In a new study, 102 people followed a weight loss diet for 18 months. Either either the Mediterranean diet or a standard low-sugar, low-fat diet. Brain scans were taken before the study began, and then again 18 months later. The results, every 1% of body weight loss equaled a brain that was nine months younger than expected for the people based on their age level. Additionally, the most successful in an individual was in reducing the visceral fat, that, that pot belly or that beer belly or the, or the belly fat, and the liver fat. The slower the brain aged during the study. Finally, reducing the intake of processed foods, especially ultra-processed foods and all the chemical-laden food, sweetened beverages, and not just soft drinks, but also juice. Sweetened beverages. Juice is very high in sugar. By reducing these, it was also associated with slowing brain aging, getting younger, If our bodies are going to get younger, we want our brains to get younger too. So the best diet to keep your brain young, the Mediterranean diet with olive oil. A study published earlier this year found that people who most closely followed this diet had almost 40% fewer of the brain plaque and tangles associated with Alzheimer's disease. Their brains were similar to people 18 years younger How would you like to have your brain be 18 years younger? You can do it. Our body can do it. You can do it. Even a small change is helpful. Just adding one food from the diet, more vegetables or fish, for example, reduced brain aging by four years. You can get healthier every day. No matter how old you are, no matter how much abuse you give in your body, you can turn that around by changing your diet, by changing the foods you're eating. You can't follow the American diet and reduce the amount of food you eat or lower the calories. You have to get rid of the junk food. American American diet is a junk diet. You have to change to the Mediterranean diet, to the paleo diet, or the ketogenic diet. You can become healthier. And with that, my friends, we're all out of time today, so we're going to have to wrap this up, and I'm going to have to get out of here soon before the station goes on to another programming. And so I'm signing off for today. But you can join me every weekend, same time, same station, for more health tips And that's how you can have a better quality of life. It's easy. Your health is your choice, so choose well. And say a prayer for this crazy, crazy country. God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country.
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.